Hey, what's going on guys? Wild Watch Lawn Service here, back with another video. And today guys, we're going to be debriefing this right Stander X mower, how it did over the week-long demo, and how it compares to my Skag V-Ride 2. Let's get right into it. Alright guys, so I want to see directly how these two pieces of equipment compare, and what the differences are between them. So over the week-long demo, I actually have 36 point something hours on that, so I think that's enough hours that I get a good little feeling for it to see how it compares to the Skag. So right off the bat, Couple things I wanted to show you guys, the differences between them. Keep in mind, they're both 52 inch decks. There's gonna be one, the length of them. Check that out. The Skag sticks out about six inches more than the right, and I thought the Skag felt longer, and it definitely is. And as you guys can see back here, the rear ends of them here are actually just about flush. Not sure if you guys can see that. This one has the rollers, and that one doesn't, but I have them so that they're pretty much flush. Another big difference between these two machines here is gonna be uh, the tire size. Look at the difference side by side. Those things are absolutely huge in comparison to these. I don't think that they're any wider, they're just a heck of a lot taller. And the rim size is a lot bigger too. These versus the little donuts. Another thing you guys might notice looking at the back of them here is gonna be the right mower here has rollers on the back, which is super beneficial and I really like that. Um, I think it'd be awesome if you have a steep trailer that you have to back this up onto, or if you're going up someplace like a steep hill or something and you have to worry about anything digging in. Whereas the Skag, they don't have those. Both the battery compartment on the Skag here is metal casing, so it's nice, solid, and protected. Same with the right here, all you gotta do is unscrew this and then the whole thing just flips up and off. Another big thing between these two mowers here is actually going to be the, with the right. The mower is mounted to the deck. It raises up and down with the deck, whereas with the Skag, it's mounted to the frame, and the deck goes up and down separately from anything else. Now you guys might be wondering which I like more, the engine being mounted to the frame or the engine being mounted to the deck. And now I understand that Wright says that the engine being mounted to the deck is going to be beneficial with the longevity of the belts and pulleys and whatnot, but from my experience with the hours I logged on it, the only thing I don't like about it is I feel like it's going to affect the engine log de longevity, which is going to be way more expensive in the long run than belts or pulleys. For example, guys, whenever I'm riding this machine and I'm going over bumps that normally the deck would go up and down just a little bit, it also jolts the engine up and down and it actually causes it to cut out. Now the engine cuts out the same as when you're running if you step off the platform which has the safety switch in it if you step off of it while it's running with the blades engaged the engine cuts off and you step back on it again it cuts back on. Now just imagine that but while you're mowing um, it does the same exact thing when you hit bumps and this is apparently common I've heard people have this with other right mowers it's just because the engine is also mounted to the deck so if you think about it anytime the deck jolts up and down like any other floating deck would the engine also is going to jolt up and down. Now I don't know if that's going to be an issue if you have an EFI engine, but for a carbureted engine, and these both have the exact same engine on them, with carbureted engine it definitely affects it and it cuts in and out, and I don't know how good that is for the health of the engine. Over the hours I logged on the right here, I can tell you that the cut quality on it is very good, um, it does an extreme, extremely good job, and actually one thing that I love with this deck versus the Velocity Plus is it doesn't clog up. So what I mean by that is like when I bought the Skag because I heard that the Velocity Plus decks are supposed to be amazing with clippings. They don't clog up under the deck. It all comes out and it's very, you don't have to scrape it very often at all. But for me guys, I actually found that I have to scrape the Skag's deck every day. Whereas, and I can't even mow in wet grass. If I mow wet grass, I have to scrape out this deck every yard or two. Now with the right mower, I was mowing wet yards first thing in the morning with a really early dew. And here in PA, we have a dew that lasts probably till like 12 or sometimes even 1 in the afternoon, depending on how heavy it is. And the right mower did fine. It didn't clump up and it didn't create clumps flying out of the deck. Another thing I liked about the right deck over the Skags is actually also going to be clippings. It cut the clippings smaller when I sent it out. The Skag seems to shoot them out as quick as possible and it leaves them a lot longer. So they lay right on top of the fresh cut lawn and you see them a lot more. Whereas this one here cuts them up a wee bit smaller and sends them out and it kind of goes down into the grass a little bit more. It's not as noticeable and definitely looks a lot nicer with just one pass. Now if you double cut a lawn with either mower, they look extremely nice. They both cut nice, they both stripe nice. Um, really you're not going to notice any difference if you're double cutting a lawn. But for a single cut lawn, this one handles the clippings better and it doesn't clog up as much in our northeastern grasses. Now traction wise, these both are pretty comparable despite this tire size difference. Um, I did find that in some situations, this, the right held the hill better than my Skag did. But in other situations, the Skag did better than the right. 
So they're really comparable, and I was trying to think about it while I was using the machines, and there was no specific one that one was better at certain types of hills than others than the other one. I mean, they literally were really comparable. If one did really good on one property, it was just as comparable on the next with the opposite machine. The uh, back seat cushions for both of them here are extremely comfortable. Um, there's really not much of a difference. This one here, when you lean against it, it's bolstered just a little, just a hair, which is kind of nice for the hills, whereas this one is completely flat. But one thing I did notice between the two of them is this one here has a lot more staples in the back of it here holding it compared to the Skag. So I just want to show you guys right here, here's the, what the underneath looks like. Look at all those staples running down holding this thing. And they even painted the plywood here. Now I'm not going to take the skags off, it's not as easy to get to, but one thing I can tell you is there's not as many staples holding it in place, and the plywood is just a plain sheet of plywood, it's not painted or coated or anything, so that one I think is was made to be a little bit more durable and last a bit longer. Same time though, when you're doing hills, having the slight bolstering is really nice with this skag cushion. Now, as you guys can hopefully see from this angle here, height-wise, the Skag sits just a little bit taller than the Standard X does. Not by much, I would say maybe three to four inches taller, but either way, it's a little bit easier to not get caught on tree branches and stuff with the right. Now, when you compare controls here, the right controls, or the Skag controls here, I'd have to say, between the two of them, the Skag wins, and here's why. So with these controls, guys, I like the Skags personally, and not because I have more hours on it, but because there's less movement when you're doing three-point turns, um, which you have to do up here, up north here, to prevent tearing properties and tearing the turf. Three-point turns are way more efficient with this kind of control setup, which most regular standards have. That's the only one in the industry that's different and has the different style controls. But also, another thing I really like about the controls on the Skag is they are extremely stiff, which I like for large properties. If you're going in one large, long straight line on really big properties, having really stiff controls is nice, because when you hit little bumps and stuff, it's not going to cause you to joke because of how stiff the controls are. Whereas with the right here, the controls here are not nearly as stiff. They're actually quite soft controls compared to other mowers that I've used in the past. And when you hit bumps, it causes you to jerk a little bit, and it causes your stripes to not be as straight. They end up being just a little bit wavy. And this is something that you really, and with more time, I'm sure you get better with. But still, having stiffer controls definitely makes it easier to hold straighter stripes. Now, one area here that Skag definitely needs to step up the game on and improve is going to be with the deck adjustment here. With the right mower here, I absolutely love this spring here is much stronger than the Skag spring. This whole deck, even with the engine being on it, lifts up and down just stupid easy. With the Skag here, it doesn't even have the engine on it, but it just takes so much effort. And I have to actually push my knees on here and lean back in order to get this deck up. Whereas with the right mower here, it's really easy. Just one hand, even with the engine, it's like no effort in comparison. Another benefit I noticed right away with these two, between these two machines with the right, is actually because of the shorter wheelbase, one, it fits in the trailer a lot easier, but two, having a shorter wheelbase makes it so if you have a hill that's rounded off kind of like this, and you're going up and over it like that, the deck does not want to scalp in comparison to the Skag. Having a shorter wheelbase keeps that deck up off the turf, so even when you're going over a rounded hill, this does not scalp, whereas the Skag is way more likely to. Unfortunately, speaking of scalping, the right did fail though with not having an anti-scalp wheel here. Yes, it's closer to the wheel. However, when going on some hills, I did find that right down here wanted to touch the ground. And actually, it made it so that the blades cut right down towards the ground. And uh, you had like one really sharp line. Whereas with the skag here, you have the anti-scalp wheel. So even when you're going on angle on the hill, that anti-scalp wheel is going to hold that side of the deck up. Keep the cut looking a little bit nicer. So I definitely think that Wright does need to add an anti-scalp wheel here. I think that would be a big improvement. Another thing Wright needs to do that Skag does is going to be these plastic pieces that run down the side of the deck. Um, it scrape up against uh, fences, trees, or rocks, or really anything without damaging your mower deck or damaging the customer's property because it's just plastic. There's also only two bolts holding it, so when you finally do run through it, all you gotta do is just unbolt it and replace it. With the right mower here, it's uh, same deck, same thickness, um, same grade. It's reinforced at the bottom there, but you don't have a plastic piece. So use any dark marks you see here are going to be from it running across and touching a fence or a tree or anything like that. And it very well could damage someone's property a lot easier than having a plastic piece running across the side. 
Another thing between these two machines here that I really like with the right mower is this muffler guard. One, it has function. It keeps you from touching that hot guard. And I felt this after running the mower for a while. And it, while yes, it does still get hot, it's not nearly as hot as the muffler. So it definitely keeps you a bit safer, but also aesthetically, I think it looks really nice and adds a really mean look to the machine. With the skag here, it's completely open. Branches and stuff can just go in and hit the muffler and um, it gets extremely hot. Thankfully, it's sunken back in a little bit and you have this little mini guard here. But realistically, guys, if you were not paying attention, it'd be very easy to touch that in comparison to that protection there. Up front here to the front of the decks here, I did want to talk about these uh, anti-scalp wheels. Um, now these ones here, I like, they're big, they're beefy, and they stick out a decent bit from the metal that holds them in place, so they actually have a lot of function to them. The only thing I've heard about is these right mowers, they need to have a recall on them supposedly. There's an air pocket in the middle of these, and the tires up here are known for cracking in the middle, falling off, and if they fall off while you're driving and you're mowing, you're going to end up running over the tire, spitting it out, and it could very well break a window or even kill someone. I have not heard any issues about that with the Skag here, but the only thing I don't like about these is they don't stick out nearly as far from the metal here. So, yes, they're going to help still with anti-scalp. So, yes, they're still going to help being anti-scalp. However, I wish that they were a little bit more beefed up and they stuck out just a little bit more from this metal lip here. And it's funny because it actually comes to the exact opposite when you get to the side ones here. The skags actually stick out a lot more than the rights do. The rights are a bit, they're a bit wider, but they're more sunken in. They don't have as much of a lip here, whereas the skag sticks out quite a lot. One thing I do like about the skag versus the right here is going to be ease of getting access to your pulleys. Um, all you gotta do is undo these two caps here and this whole piece comes right off and you get access to all your pulleys and everything. With the right here, it's kind of back in there. You don't really have any clear access to it, and you're gonna end up having to take a lot of parts off to get access to those if you ever need to replace anything. Now, both machines here, the mufflers being um, horizontal like this, they don't really give you any room for using the impact for your middle pulley here. So if you end up wanting to swap out blades here, and you got a middle one, you're gonna end up having to jack both mowers up and go from underneath the deck. I really like it whenever, like the old V-Rides, they had the muffler here horizontal, or. Uh, they had the muffler here vertical, so you're able to stick an impact in there and take the middle one out from the top, which is obviously way easier than trying to crawl underneath the mower. Another thing I want to mention real quick is after a week of use with this Stander X here, um, one thing that I have noticed with this is actually going to be the speed of traveling, whether in transport or mowing, is going to be way, way slower than the Skag. I don't know what the speed's rated for for this, but if the Skag's 12 miles an hour, I wouldn't be surprised if this was only 8 miles an hour. It's definitely a very noticeable difference between the two, and you cannot mow full speed with this gag anyway, but it's really helpful for transporting when you finish a three-acre property and you have to go all the way back to the trailer. It saves just a bit more time compared to the right. Another difference between the two here is going to be de gas tanks. This one is actually an eight-gallon tank, whereas the right's here. I can't remember if it's a five or a five-and-a-half-gallon tank, but either way, it's, this one's going to be two to three gallons smaller. And that was very noticeable too when I was mowing with the right and doing my daily roots. This one ended up needing to be filled up sooner than the skag did. Usually I can get two mowing days out of usually I can get two mowing days out of my skag tank here before having to refill it. But with this, I got one and a half days and then I have to refill it to get me the rest of the way through the day. But that being said, guys. Both mowers are excellent machines. You really can't go wrong with either one. I highly recommend, if you guys are interested in both of these machines or either one, I highly, highly recommend you get a demo with both of them and use them one after the other and directly compare and see which one works best for your turf and your grasses. For me, I was very impressed with the cut and the and most importantly, the clippings with how the right handled that versus the skag. In my opinion, that wins over the skag on the clip clippings. Cut quality was pretty much the same though. I definitely think that the right mower lives up to the hype, guys. It's a really good machine, and like I said, you really can't go wrong with any major mower brand company. They're all commercial mowers. They're all going to make tall grass short, and it's really up to you guys. I want to thank everyone over at Wright, especially Judith Roth, as well as uh, Ken, the demo guy, for dropping this thing off. I really appreciate it for the last week I had it. Logged some hours on it, got to use it, and I have to say, guys, when it comes time to get another mower, right mowers will probably be in the running. Anyways guys, hope you enjoyed today's video, and don't be afraid to comment anything down below on your thoughts and opinions if you guys have owned either one of these and your dislikes or likes about them. But also, if you guys have any, have any questions on either machine, be sure to shoot it down below, or DM me on Instagram, you can find my Instagram channel down below. 
and you guys are more than welcome to ask any questions and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. Anyways guys, hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you enjoyed the last couple videos that I was demoing this right. It's a really awesome machine guys. I definitely recommend you go down to your local dealer, check it out and try to get a local demo set up. It's definitely very good. As with both machines, or really any machine, nothing's perfect. There's definitely a few things that can be upgraded or improved on both of them, but really, you can't go wrong with either one. As always, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe if y'all want to see more, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.